everyone, this is Russ from the Paplus Pedal, and in this video I'm going to talk about cameras, uh, about the cameras I've used in the past and what I'm using now when we go uh, traveling by bike. So what you see before you is a Nikon D700, pretty awesome camera here. Uh, what I have mounted on it is a 24mm to 85mm zoom lens. Uh, this is a great kind of focal length for travel, you can get landscapes and portraits. When we toured from Oregon to Glacier National Park, this is the big camera I brought. Uh, really happy with the images, but not so happy with the, the weight and the size. At the end, I really felt it was kind of a liability. I was taking less pictures because it seemed like such a, such a hassle to get to it. Uh, so since the end of that trip, and at the beginning of our New Zealand trip, I've been looking at other different camera systems to take bicycle touring. Uh, I've searched uh, high and low, uh, far and wide and settled on this camera system, the Micro Four Thirds. Uh, it's not perfect, but I think it's pretty awesome for uh, travel. Uh, for those that aren't super familiar with the Micro Four Thirds system, it's a system that's supported by Olympus and Lumix, um, which is Panasonic and they make uh, the Leica cameras, etc. Uh, the sensors are smaller than the Nikon. Uh, they're about half the size. So if you're shooting a 20 millimeter lens, it's uh, equivalent in uh, 35 millimeter terms is a 40. If you're shooting a nine, it's equivalent is 18 millimeters. Um, so you get the picture. So the nice thing about the Micro Four Thirds system is it's got a bevy of lenses and accessories and it's freaking tiny. I mean, just look at that. In terms of uh, weight and size and volume and even cost, savings, uh, the Micro Four Thirds system comes out on top. Uh, there are some losses. Um, because of the smaller sensor, you don't have as much control over the depth of field. So if you like those real, really narrow depth of field shots that you see in portraits, the Micro Four Thirds system isn't quite um, tuned enough to, to do that. It, doesn't, it just doesn't have a large enough sensor to, to pull that off, and there aren't enough um, super, super fast primes to make it happen. But uh, if you shoot landscapes, if you shoot uh, travel photography where you're trying to get wide angle vistas then, um, and you don't need that shallow depth of field, then the Micro Four Thirds system works really, really well. So let's talk about the lenses real quick. Uh, what I have on here now is a, what is it? It's a 14 to 42. So this is equivalent to 28 millimeters to, to uh, 84. So it's kind of your general standard uh, kit zoom lens and it works pretty well. Um, not the sharpest lens, but when you're just shooting at uh, smaller apertures, it does pretty good. Uh, its main advantage is, is it's uh, super lightweight and it collapses. It's actually a pancake lens. Um, there it is, fully extended. As you can see, when it's retracted, it's really, really tiny. Uh, so what other lenses are there for Micro Four Thirds that, um, that I like for touring? Well, let's take a look. Uh, this one's a really good one. This is probably one of my most used lenses used lenses. It's the 9 to 18 millimeter uh, Olympus zoom lens. Uh, so that gives you a 18, 18 to about 36 millimeter in 35 millimeter terms. Wow, lots of numbers. Um, essentially it's a wide angle zoom. This is great for action photography uh, to give things a kind of real dynamic uh, sense in the image. Uh, it's great for landscape shots. Um, so one of my most used lenses. For portraits, um, this is kind of the real obvious choice. It's a 45 millimeter 1.8. So what that translates to is about 90 millimeters, uh, 1.8 lens. Um, and it's great for headshots or those kinds of shots where you want a narrow depth of field. Another good lens is a 20 millimeter 1.7 by Lumix. Um, this is equivalent to a 40 millimeter 1.7, so kind of your standard uh, focal length, but uh, with the uh, wide aperture, you can knock out the background. Another awesome lens, uh, particularly if you're doing video, is the 14 to 150 millimeter lens. So this gives you a range, an amazing range, of 28 to 300. Um, this is kind of your do-it-all do it lens, um, extreme telephoto, and uh, wide angle. If you actually wanted to forgo all these lenses and uh, speed in your lenses wasn't a factor, 
you'd probably just want to buy this one lens. Um, it's a great uh, video lens because you can track uh, subjects from way off in the distance and um, kind of follow, follow them in uh, as they come in closer. For the astute viewer there, you've noticed I have two different Micro Four Thirds cameras and you're probably asking, you know, if you love the Olympus so much, why do you get the Lumix? Um, well, I kind of like them for two different reasons. I think uh, Olympus, in terms of taking pictures, I prefer. I love the, the color and the sharpness of the images coming out of the Olympus uh, pen, pen cameras. But since we've been shooting more video, uh, the GH2 is the natural choice. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with the GH2, it's um, the Panasonic offering that's kind of optimized for video. As you can see, it's got a flip-out LCD screen. It actually has inputs for um, a microphone. Uh, where is that? Right here. And uh, you can take beautiful uh, video with it. Uh, just go to Vimeo, type in GH2, and you'll see all the, the pretty awesome uh, indie work that people are doing with the Lumix GH2. Um, so uh, we've established that Micro Four, Thir Micro Four Thirds is pretty awesome for travel because of its size weight, volume, and price point. Uh, which, if you had to choose one, or if I had to choose one, would I bring with me on uh, our next bicycle tour? The Lumix or the Olympus? Um, well, the answer is it, it sort of depends. If um, I knew I wasn't going to be shooting any video, and uh, just primarily stills, I would definitely bring uh, the Olympus EP3 with the finder and a couple of lenses. Uh, if I knew that I wanted to shoot video, then uh, definitely the GH2. Uh, the images, uh, the still images are, are pretty are pretty good. They're not my favorite, um, but for video, it, it really can't be beat. So I know that was probably a disappointing answer for for many of you, but you know there might be some that are like, well, I'm not going to shoot any video, so Olympus is a obvious choice. And there's some of you that may want to do more video, and then well. The Lumix GH2 is the obvious choice. Um, so, uh, how's it compared to the D700? Uh, just by size, you can still see D700 is enormous, even when compared to the slightly bigger looking GH2. Actually, let me shift things around here so you can get a better sense of scale. So, there you go. Um, thing to note that this is an enormous focal length um, on the GH2. This this is going from 28 millimeters to 300, and on the Nikon that's only going from 24 to 85. So though it looks kind of absurdly uh, big on uh, the small body of the GH2, it also has an absurdly long range, um, and still it's way smaller, way lighter, and uh, also a lot less uh, expensive than the D700. That said. Um, I'm not getting rid of my D700 anytime soon. It definitely has a place in my arsenal, uh, especially with uh, paid commercial work where I'm not traveling long distances. I'm definitely going to use the D700 um, over the Micro Four Thirds uh, systems for now until I feel that um, they catch up in all the ways that, well, that I think they need to catch up on. But uh, so that's my overview. I hope that was helpful in kind of showing you guys the options for different cameras when you go bike touring. So if you've thought about Micro Four Thirds um, and are you know, kind of on the fence, I can tell you it's a really great system and its main advantage over other mirrorless camera systems is that there's a strong supply of lenses um, as I showed you. I mean, there's lots of mirrorless systems out there, but they don't quite have like, they don't, they don't have the you know, they don't have the range of lenses yet. Uh, they've got great bodies and maybe one or two lenses, but not, not the complete range. Um, so there you go. I hope this uh, video overview was helpful. And um, if you feel like getting your very own Olympus EP3 with a finder and kit lens, or a Lumix GH2 with a 14, well, they don't sell this package actually. It's, it's Lumix and a Olympus. Uh, but if you feel like getting any of this gear, you can check out uh, our Amazon store. There's a page in our Amazon store called What's in Russ's Camera Bag, and it has all these wonderful goodies, 
And if you purchase something, then we get coffee money. Uh, and I love coffee. So thanks for watching, and I hope this was helpful.